Right, so here I am again for the fourth installment of my little mini series on integrating the Somfy Glydia 60E curtain motor via OpenHub and SmartThings all the way to the Amazon Echo. Well, guess what? After the first installment, Kai Kreuzer, Mr. OpenHub himself, contacted me to point out that in OpenHub 2, which is coming out soon, it is in testing, it's available for testing for everybody, um, there's a much neater way of doing this. You can in OpenHub 2 actually run a Philips Hue bridge emulation, which can then integrate directly into the Amazon Echo. However, first of all, I'm still on OpenHub 1 at the moment. Can't wait to play with 2, but now it's 1. But also, it allows me to actually show you the REST API of OpenHub and also how in SmartThings you can send any local network web commands quite easily with just minimal programming. So I'd like to show, share that with you anyway. Um, I hope that somebody will have some use for that. So, as a reminder, I have set up the curtain bedroom motor in OpenHub as bedroom curtain. And if you press the up button, it opens. And when that finishes, then you can press the down button and it will close again. As a quick reminder, in the in the actual items file in OpenHub, the actual items called bedroom curtains without space with a capital B and a capital C. You can call it whatever you want. That's what I called it. That's important for when you go to the REST API because that is the name that you have to use here. So it's simply the IP address um, of the server your OpenHub is running and the port OpenHub is listening on. Followed by slash, capital CMD, question mark, and then the title and equals up, brings it up. And as you can probably guess, if you change that to down, it goes down again. So that's a very, very simple URL that you can put into any web browser or any application can send that across. So let's go to smart things. In smart things, I've got here a, a virtual switch. So it's my bedroom curtain device here. And you can see it is of the type simulated switch. There you go. And setting up a simulated switch is very, very simple. I'll just quickly demonstrate that. If you click on my devices, then uh, you can simply add a new device. And on the device type, you've got a vast list of possibilities. And if you scroll down to S like simulated, you've got all sorts of simulated things you can simulate. The one type that the Amazon Echo can deal with at the moment is switch. So let's do a simulated switch. And it's simple like that. You just give it, give it a name, etc. And um, yeah, and, you, and you're good to go. So let's look at the little bit of coding required. The code in, for smart things is called smart apps. If you want to create a new one, you very simply click on new smart app and then you fill in name namespace is usually um, you know, your mail address or something like that and a little bit of a description choose a category and can ignore all the rest and click create and that actually creates for you a nice little skeleton uh, of a of an app so all the all this comment about you know who you are what it's called is automatically generated the whole section about definition is generated and then the rest you have to do yourself but the main functions that you need are already there they're just pretty empty so the first function that you need is preferences that's where you when you install the smart app um, set 
the, the switches, uh, yeah, all the settings that you need. So here we've got the switch that we want to use. Obviously that will be that virtual switch that we're talking about. And so that it's a little bit more um, generally usable. You, I'm putting in here rather than hard coding the server IP and the port, and, port number and the device name, I put that in as, as fields that the user can enter. And then it is, there's a little routine called installed that gets called when it's installed. It's, it's good uh, form to put a debug message out with the settings. And um, I then am calling a little routine called subscribed to switches. I'm doing that as a little routine rather than hard coding it because the settings can also be updated and when it is updated, the routine updated is called, you then unsubscribe to anything you have subscribed to. We'll look at that in a sec. And then I'm calling that same routine again for subscribing to the switches. So now to the little routine subscribe to switches. It's wrongly named, it's really just one switch that we're subscribing to. But I have to admit I, I copied that from another example. So really it should be subscribed to switch. Bear with me. So we're subscribing to the same switch but for two events. The event that the switch is switched on and the event that the switch is switched off. And if it's switched on, we're calling another routine called open event handler. And if it's switched off, we're calling the routine close event handler. So if we go down and look at these two, they are symmetric. So in both cases, we first of all create a string with the IP address colon the port number. We need a device ID which um, seems to be arbitrary so I'm just calling it 1234. Put out a, a log message so that we can debug things if required. And then if we look at open as, a, as an example here, we're then sending a hub action to the physical device to do a, a get command, so that's a HTTP uh, get command for, for slash cmd question mark and then the, the device that we're switching, so that was our bedroom curtains and we're giving it up and it's HTTP 1.1, just a bit of formalities and then the host IP address uh, including the port number and a few control characters for carriage return and new lines and we want it down to the physical device on the LAN protocol and then there is that network ID which doesn't seem to make any real difference what you call it and then equally as said on the closing the only difference is that instead of up it's saying down here and that's all there is to it so if we now here in the um, simulation area, which I think is really neat to have that here. You set that to the home location. And it's remembered our, our settings, so the bedroom curtain switch and the IP address, port number, and our, here's our bedroom curtains again. So let's install that. And now we actually have the switch here, and if I if I press that, then our little curtain motor should start to move. There we go. So, that's now, should be open. And back to close. You can see I had to press it one more time because the curtain motor was in a, of a different opinion what state it is in to our simulated switch, but now they are in sync. And if they ever get out of sync, you just do it twice and it works. So, now the interesting bit is the Amazon Echo. So, what you have here is, we did call this switch the bedroom curtain. And if, you, if we go to the Amazon Echo web page, because I'm in Europe, I can't even install the app for the Amazon Echo for Alexa. So 
please, 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 Amazon, please make the Echo available in Europe. It's just so difficult to get hold of them. And I have to say, now that I've tried it, I certainly won't, don't want to live without it anymore. Please make them available in Europe. There's no good reason for having it only in the States. Make it available here. I'll stop moaning now. So, what you have in there, I've already done the discovery. So, in, in the Amazon Echo web page or in the app, you can, if we have a look here, you can discover devices. It then goes for about 20 seconds, finds all your devices, and, and then in here we do have, scroll down a little bit, uh, here is our bedroom curtain. Now, you'll say, but you kept on just calling it uh, open bedroom and closed bedroom rather than bedroom curtain. The trick is that you can kind of rename things in the Amazon Echo by creating groups. So I have, you know, you can see here I've got groups with multiple devices in them, but for bedroom I simply have one group with one device, which is our bedroom curtain. So if you click on here, you get the whole list of devices. And if you scroll down, then you will see here our bedroom curtains are listed. And it is literally that simple. Obviously, you have to make sure that you introduce smart things and the Amazon Echo anyway. But if you have both, I'm sure you would have done that already. This simply by, by adding the skill for smart things to the Amazon Echo. And then, yeah, just to demonstrate it one more time, you can go and say, oh, which round is it now? Uh, Alexa, open bedroom. Okay. There we go. And last not least, Alexa, close bedroom. Okay. So, that is it, that concludes my little mini-series and now we've seen all the technology behind integrating the Sonfi curtain motor all the way to the Amazon Echo. I hope you find it useful and if you like it, subscribe, leave me comments and uh, yeah, see you soon, bye!